All right, thanks everyone. My name is uh, David Wiley. As I'm staring at my title slide now, I recognize I failed to put my name on it. My name is David Wiley. Uh, I'm the Chief Academic Officer at Lumen Learning. And um, I wanna talk about sustaining and improving open educational resources. And at Lumen, we come at this from the perspective of, you know, Lumen's mission is to enable unprecedented learning for all students. And we think about sustaining and maintaining OER specifically in this context of improving student learning and come at it really kind of from four different perspectives, a data-driven data continuous improvement perspective, a community-driven continuous improvement perspective, accessibility improvements, and DEI improvements. And uh, given that I have uh, six minutes and 10 seconds left, I'm just gonna talk about the two on the left-hand side today uh, and save these two on the right-hand side for another time. Um, talking about community-driven continuous improvement as a way of sustaining and improving open educational resources. I think there are kind of two key points about models of contribution. The first thing to understand about models of contribution is that there have to be people. If there aren't people uh, you know, using your resources, uh, engaging with you around those, th there's nobody to contribute. And the second thing is that the number of contributors, the number of people who actually contribute will be inversely proportional to how difficult it is for them to contribute. In other words, if it's very costly and expensive to contribute to sustain, sustaining and maintaining OER, very few people will do it. But if we can make it very, very easy, then more people will be willing to engage. So just to give you a view of what's happening at Lumen, you know, over the last 12 months, we had about 115 million people um, make about 186 million visits to the OER that we share on our website. So there are definitely people there. And what we've tried to do to make it very, very easy for the community to contribute to the sustaining and improving of the OER that we aggregate uh, and create and publish on our website is at the bottom of each page now, there's a button. And the button just says, improve this page. And if you click that button, it takes you over to a Google Doc that has completely replicated all of the content uh, that is on the page. And you arrive at the Google Doc with permission to make suggestions, uh, turned on, and so you can just hit the Google Doc, find the place where you thought there's an opportunity to do something better, and just start typing. There's no ticket to file or no, you know, Bugzilla or something to log into. You just look at the content, you make the suggestion that you want to make, and we feel like that's about as easy as it can be made to encourage people to suggest improvements. So when an edit happens in that Google Doc, that automatically in the background does create a Zendesk ticket uh, so that we can manage those improvements as they come in. And that ticket gets triaged in a couple of ways. Um, first, if it's something very simple, uh, like maybe there was a, you know, a period that was missing or a word that's been misspelled, then that triage kicks that off to an intern who makes that improvement. And then that improvement is available right away to everyone that uses uh, Lumen's materials. Something that's a little more complicated uh, goes to a course product manager who might be able to make that change themselves, or they might reach out and get a couple of faculty members uh, involved. But this is overall what the process looks like. And we've been able to scale it quite well. Um, for the last couple of weeks this year, you can see that kind of total contributions is hovering, you know, between 150, 200 uh, per week improvements that suggestions that people are making about ways that OER can be improved, uh, you know, coming across 50-ish unique contributors on around 100 pages, uh, something like that per week. And then the thing that's really fun to do after people make a suggestion for an improvement and then we're able to take that suggestion, implement it, and have the content be better is to add their name to this acknowledgement section so that there's this always growing list of people from the community who've been contributing to the improvement of the OER that uh, we're publishing on our website. Data-driven continuous improvement starts out a little differently. It starts from learning data. And um, we use what we call the RISE framework, which is an article that uh, a couple of us published a couple of years ago. And the key idea behind the RISE framework is that when you take every piece of content and every piece of practice every interactive uh, kind of formative assessment, every summative assessment item, and you outcome align all of those, it gives you the ability to ask questions about 
uh, for example, on the horizontal here, the degree to which people are engaged with the content, with the practice opportunities, and ask some questions about how their content engagement relates to their learning as their learning is demonstrated in the assessment, uh, summative assessment activities that they're doing. And we would assume this kind of up and to the right relationship where at the bottom left, if you're not very engaged with the content, you're not going to do very well on the assessments. And at the top right, if you're really engaged, doing all the reading, doing all the practice, that you'd perform well on the assessments. And so the RISE framework helps us focus in on this bottom right-hand corner, places where people are highly engaged with content and still performing poorly on the assessments. And those are the places that the data draws our attention to to help us engage in continuous improvement. This is an example of the kind of graphic uh, that is generated by the RISE analysis software. Every dot here will be one of the learning outcomes in the course and uh, you know, the software to do this RISE analysis we published in the journal of open source software so you can grab it from there if you'd like to take a look at it. We would love to have the community involved in the process of doing this data-driven continuous improvement as well which is why every semester we run the RISE analyses for all of the courses um, that we uh, make available through our Waymaker product and put these all out on Google Docs. You can link to them from our website uh, so that you can get involved with the continuous improvement in that way if you'd like. I wanted to show you just a quick example of what it might look like to take some OER that we had picked up uh, and started using through this data-driven process, found students struggling with this topic, and so, you know, replace a graphic with an interactive with a lot of practice and feedback there that's available to students. So that's 10 seconds left. Thank you for these seven minutes. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. It'll be great to see whatever questions or comments you have. Thanks. Thank you, David. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open for questions. Feel free to type in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask David a question. Uh, David, can I start? Please. Uh, this this is a bit technical, but but I, I saw something that, uh, that 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 looked very interesting. Are you guys using H five P? In some places, yes. That is fantastic. That was yeah, we love H five P. That is that is good. It's a it's it's one of our projects. Yes, we are big fans. Thank you. Other questions? David, I've got one while people are thinking. Um, when it comes to getting students and uh, faculty to contribute with the one-click edits to, yes. your, to your CC BY license content, uh, what kind of uh, advertising do you do around that? How do you socialize uh, that that option is available? How do you encourage people to make edits as part of the pedagogy that's, that's used in the course? Yeah, so far we've done literally nothing. We just put that button at the bottom of the page. We started with a pilot with three courses last spring and it went really well and we expanded across all of our courses in the fall. Um, and you know, we're getting a couple hundred suggestions each week without doing anything other than putting the button there. I think there's an interesting opportunity to talk more to faculty about the pedagogical implications of having students thinking more critically and reading in a little different way where they you know, as a student, if you're reading a book and you knew that you could make a suggestion for an improvement that might appear in the book two or three days later, that might have you reading kind of with a different eye than it would if you're just highlighting or, you know, doing something else. 